produced by Do You Validate? Episode 5, The Nexus. Cindy, Julianne, Lope and Chet all find themselves in some place new to them, but older than time itself. The four of you were all standing and you saw a light shoot up around you. Chet, you were inside many nodes in front of an arcade machine. Lope, you were in Minos Inn in a room where you were kind of locked in there and you couldn't get out because of some supernatural force and you had found pictures of you and your companions and the light formed around you in that. Cindy, you're in the newly opened basement of Ed Minions as you walked downstairs and, and saw a hologram and uh, a circle appeared around you. And Julianne, you were in the basement of Denim is On as the uh, doppelganger surrounded you at your newly formed doppelcon. The uh, light formed around you and shot up. So you're all in these cylinders of lights and they dissipate around you. And the four of you see each other. Chet is uh, sitting there. He looks a little, he looks real, real, real confused. And his eyes are a little squinty. He's wearing like a kind of hempen poncho. Um, he's got some like loose pants. He's not wearing shoes um, and he's got a crystal necklace. He's carrying something that um, if you're familiar with the, the classic franchise Yu-Gi-Oh! Looks like a Yu-Gi-Oh! dueling kit. He also just has a ton of knives on him, but he's just kind of hanging out and looking a little confused. Julianne looks pretty immediately frantic. She has a ponytail that is just dark brown hair pulled up pretty basic. She has a small gold cross around her neck, and she's wearing reasonably fashionable clothing. Uh, you know, would have picked it up at a mall. She looks somewhat young. Julianne's got this sword that's about the size as she is. She holds it really easily, and... Her hair is kind of coming out of her ponytail. There's like a weird big floppy hat that she's still wearing and some big denim jeans. You make eye contact with her. She makes just a shocked, surprised, somewhat frantic face. Lope is, um, he's kind of medium height Latino dude. He's got dark eyes, warm olive skin, and kind of like a Caesar cut. He's wearing like pretty simple clothes, like doesn't, he's not dressed up at all. He's got some dark jeans that have definitely seen better days. Uh, they've seen better days even before like an hour ago. He's got just like a beat up trash pair of sneakers, a beige Henley shirt. There's some sunglasses tucked into his collar and that's about the only thing that looks at all presentable about him. He's got uh, just a huge like hand cannon pistol in one hand and five beers like connected to each other still in the other. And he's just looking around with just dead eyes. Just like, there's zero expression on his face, as though everything is just completely fine, and this is just a normal thing that can happen. Cindy is not very tall, and she's got like, it's just a very, a very normal haircut. I want you to picture just like the most mom mom you can picture. Mom jeans. Very, like, off-the-rack blouse. She is covered in a copious amount of, like, mud and blood same because she hadn't had time to change yeah i'm i'm real cut up um and i've got a lot of blood on me and some of it is mine and some of it isn't and not looking good if that's the case i think i'm just gonna go into mom mode then. <laughs> oh dear are, are you okay come here come here i've got i've got something in my bag here for you and i just want to start bandaging up lope where's kurt who are all of you where is he <laughs> I mean, this might as well happen. Um, and Chet pulls out a vape. Julianne is already walking around whatever space we're in, trying to figure out 
What is this? Where are we? So, Julianne, you start to walk around. Cindy immediately started to go into Lope. Lope did not pay attention to anything because his mission of finally avenging his family and killing the Manticore is over. And Chet's just ripping that those sweet clouds. And Julianne, at first, you think you're just kind of in a room. Uh, it just seems like normal kind of walls. But then as you start to, like, walk around and get closer to the wall itself, the room extends as you continue to walk. And you, you know, can try to test it down anyway and like you can run forward and it stands but then once you start making your way back to the group it starts to retract in again on itself seemingly like anywhere you walk the room will expand and then kind of like shape itself to be the distance what you need and you don't need to roll anything to get to gather that lope holds up his hand as julianne starts going further away and just goes hey stay close i don't think that going anywhere is actually going to get me anywhere it's not Real? This is wrong. Hey, so, uh, who are y'all? Is this another video game? Lope. Hey, what's up, Lope? I'm Chet. Uh, and Lope takes one of the beers off and tosses it over to Chet. Chet grabs it, he says, nah, man, I don't drink. All right. He checks it back. Catches it, pops it open. All right, yeah, sick, sick, yeah, yeah, you do you. I reckon if we're doing introductions, I'm Cindy Dubois. Mm. Pleasure. Uh-huh. Hey. Hi, Cindy. Hey, uh, y'all all right? Are you, uh, are you, you over there, you seem, uh, a little uptight. Six sword. Oh, thanks. It's just that none of you are my brother, though, and he was right next to me a minute ago, and I swear, if I lose him, my parents are going to, well, I know I'm the one with the sword, but, uh, my parents can be pretty intimidating when they want to be. Don't you worry, dear. We're all going to get out of this just fine. My guess is that we've done some sort of extra planner teleportation. Now, it does happen in my line of work occasionally, but as long as you keep calm and keep focused, you'll make it through just fine, I promise. No, no, so listen. I figured this out. Uh, okay. We're dead already. What? No. Right? No, no, no. <laughs> oh, don't worry. Shit, don't worry. Really? Cuz we had thing we had to we had the things we had to do and we did them and now we're done. And that's okay. What? Uh we're supposed to be now. So, no, I now I have died before. Like it it happens once again in my line of work. This doesn't feel like that. I've still got a stab wound here. So, yeah, probably cuz you're I'm dead. I'm not sure I can die. No, no. I I made through that. I was eating a sandwich at my I'm pretty sure. I'm feeling pretty good about it, too. As you all are having this conversation, each of you had an um, item that was glowing whenever you stepped in into the circles. Cindy, you had a piece of parchment paper that was in the back of your bookkeeping notebook. Julianne, the cylinder handle of your sword was glowing. Lope, you had a cross guard that was part of a replica sword that you had used to like fight off the manticore when it first attacked you. And then Chet, you have a left half of a shield that you've retrofitted to use to store your knives. And you're having this conversation, and those items stop glowing once you transport to this room and at this point they are now glowing again and then the items disappear in a puff of black smoke oh man is it is it just the page or the whole book just that one page and then julianne the handle because it was the handle of your sword it's now what seems like there's just the core of the actual handle there and so it seems like the actual outside of the core of your sword handle was the actual thing glowing and not the handle itself so you still do have your sword okay good my knives man yeah and then chet all of your knives fall down because that was uh, how you Aww. stored them <laughs> okay Aww. wait but if you think that we're dead and you're just fine yeah. with what being in this room forever no no we're not gonna stay here forever we're gonna move on you just gotta figure out why so this is like an afterlife waiting room figure so and he takes off another beer and holds it out to julian i i am not old enough it's fine you're dead <laughs> i can't I just can't. Okay. I like I'm fairly certain we aren't dead. Let's let's mm-hmm. not let's not throw throw out that baby with the bathwater quite yet. I have literally never believed that the afterlife could look anything like this my entire life. Yo, Cindy, what's your job? Oh, I'm an accountant. Oh, hell yeah. Sick, dude. Uh, how much do accountants die? <laughs> from from time to time, it's it's ah, thing. yeah, 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 yeah. Hell yeah. So so the blood and stuff is. Oh, th- th- those are from 
a uh, couple of monsters that I had to take care of with a few of my friends. Manicore. Right, not from other accountants. Just making sure. No, 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 no. They, they aren't accountants. They're the team that I do the accounting for. Oh. Gotcha. Can we, like, take a vote? Like, are we dead, or should I, like, try to get home? We should probably try to get home. My wife's waiting for me. She's gonna be real upset already that I'm gonna be running so late, and I got stabbed. Here, I can I can help with that, I bet. Here. And uh, I, I put my crystal around your neck. I gotta say, I'm not, I'm not too into the whole new age medicine type stuff. I know it's shocking. A lot of people, they see me and they're like, oh, she must be into all them crystals and what have you. But they really ain't my thing. No, nah, no, nah, dude, don't knock it. Don't knock it. I got you. I got you. So do you keep the crystal on your neck or do you give oh, it back? Oh, well, I mean, if, if it's making chat feel better. It is. Okay, I'll I'll leave it on there. Yeah, you look at the crystal and just kind of shrug it and you, like, put it back on your chest. And as soon as it hits, even though there's no windows in this room, a beam of light comes through the walls and hits the crystal, reflects a rainbow spectrum out in front of you to where you're seeing, like, the literal whole light spectrum. The walls break apart around you, and the four of you find yourself standing in nothing. It's not that there's a complete darkness around you. You are just surrounded by an ever-expanding and changing spectrum of light in front of you. And then you all hear a voice. Before the worlds began to form, there was nothingness. An ever-stretching void without purpose. At the very center of that emptiness... A spark manifested, and from that spark the nexus was created. Once this spark was ignited, its fiery presence spread across all of time and space. The nexus energy and the void combined to form what you know as existence, what is called the dimensional line, an ever-expanding series of new dimensions shaped by the one that came before it. The Nexus energy can only be used to create, whereas the Void seeks to destroy all so it might exist as it did before, in solitude. This struggle is what fuels our worlds. When the dimensional line was created, the head of it was the first to form. It is comprised of the four prime dimensions. These four were created at once and act as the link from the rest of the dimensional line to the Nexus itself. When a new dimension is created, so too is an entity that is tasked with being the first to exist. These entities have been called many things. The First Ones, Gods, Supreme Beings, Creators. Their names are Legion. The Nexus energy flows freely from one dimension to the next and so on in an infinite line of new worlds. This flow allows aspects of one world to be brought to the next. Each new dimension is a rearrangement of the energy sent from the last, and with every new addition and change, these effects flow forward into the next world, always outward, never cycling back, until... Each of the four prime dimension entities aren't like any other entity down the line. For their plane's connection to the Nexus is stronger, and that is why you are here. First, the why. Then, the what. Prime One. Hmm, that is strange. I don't remember existing before this. Who was that over there? The purpose of these entities was never defined, but quite often questioned. One thing is known for sure. They are the only beings capable of wielding the full force of the Nexus energy that flows through their dimension. Well, going around and seeing all the cool round things, which I think I'll call... Hmm... Rounders? Yeah, Rounders. But there doesn't seem to be much going on in each of the Rounders. It'd be cool if something happened. And without knowing it, they created life in their dimension. This, like all things, flowed over into the next world. 
Prime 2. Oh, oh my, what, what is this? You weren't, you weren't here before. Well, I think I'll call you, hmm, maybe a fish? <gasps> With a wag like that, you like the name. I just wish there were more of you. Creation has no rules. The universes exist because of a spark. The spark was the will of existence manifesting itself. The will of these prime entities works the same. And their creations will send ripples across the dimensions that affect one after the other. Prime 3. Well, would you look at that? Another new thing. Very interesting. Although I do have to say I would not have chosen that coloring. I do think it'd look much better if... Oh! Did I change that? I seem to have changed it. If that's the case, what else can I change? With each new creation, the inspiration of our entities flourished all the way down to the final prime dimension. Prime 4. Ah, jeez! Look at that! More cool stuff to play with! Ah, this is great! So many cool things that are like each other. And then there's other cool things that aren't like anything else? Ah, <laughs> Huh. Speaking of not being like stuff, I, I feel like there's something my inside voice wants to tell me. And just like that, a thought was shared across all four prime dimensions. What if I'm not the only one? What if I'm not the only one? And with one thought, they found each other. Wait, are you... I, I can't believe it. How? Huh, I've thought a lot of things before, but this... this is new. Oh, dang, this is so crazy. I was just, like, wondering if I was, like, the only one, and then boom! <laughs> you said that? I thought... I thought I thought that. No, 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 no. Your thoughts are wrong. I was the one who thought that. Neither of you had that thought. Even if you thought you did. Wait, stop. Uh, you're all saying thought too much, and I lost track of my... Thought? And just like that, they weren't alone anymore. They had others to share their world with. So, this is one of my roundos. I mainly use this one to store cool puffs of color I found all over. Oh! That's what a roundo is. I, I call them circular piles. In all of my notes, I've referred to them as celestial spheres. Wait, are we talking about the same thing because I call those things floating orbs? Once they saw all of one dimension, they moved on to the next. The four of them wanted to know everything about each other and their worlds. Then, once again, they all shared the same thought. They all loved you so much. How about I make some more of you and bring it over to them? So, I have a fun surprise. I'm going to make more of you for my new friends. I'm pretty fond of these, so I believe you will be a fit representation of my fondness for the others. Hmm, I'll give them one of these and uh, two of these. Oh, they have to have five of these. They wanted to give one another a gift. Something to remind each other that they aren't alone anymore. But something else came with these gifts. The bleed. Although Nexus energy flows between these worlds, it was never intended to be interrupted or to flow backwards. The will of one wavers or strengthens when intertwined with the will of another. This fluctuation causes a fundamental change in all things, but when dealing with the will of the prime entities, you are dealing with the building blocks of creation and destruction themselves. The backflow of energy is how what you know as monsters were formed. Creatures similar to the ones you know, but twisted and changed. These changes don't always manifest in malevolent ways, but regardless, the existence of these new creatures created an imbalance of the Nexus energy and void that fill the universes. As the dimensional line expands, each new dimension is made moments after the first, thus its point of origin in time is further away than the last. The prime four dimensions are all perfectly in sync with one another. It is that bond that allows them to be the connection point from the nexus to the rest of the line. The bleed created from the imbalance caused the worlds to drift apart. 
thus impeding the flow of energy between the Prime Four and into the rest of the dimensions beyond them. When the Prime Four dimensions were created, they were made in the same instant. As the bleed spread, the worlds of the Prime Dimensions fell out of sync. Since the bleed, their worlds have drifted apart by approximately 3 months, 28 days, 13 hours, 48 minutes, and 37 seconds. The bleed was unnoticed at first, and the changes weren't even seen as ill omens, but merely as interesting and new. But as time went on and the Prime Entities brought more of their worlds to the others, the bleed could no longer be ignored. The imbalance had created something new, something that would break the tie of the Prime Four and stop the flow of energy altogether, ending everything that was and will be. We all know why it's happening. N no, it can't be that, because if that is true... If that is true, it means we all have to go back. Go back? That's not a big deal. We all go back to our plane all the time. It's not the same. What do you mean? This didn't start until we found each other. And the longer we stay together, the worse it gets. Not a big deal. We just don't see each other for a bit, let it heal up, then we go back to hanging out again. It's not as simple as that. We have to fully fix the problem. And to do that, we all have to go back to before. There has to be another way. To before? Like, when we were all alone? It's either alone or not at all. I'd rather cease to be than go back. But if you did that, so would everything else. You're just gonna sit here and watch our worlds die? What if... What if we didn't just sit here? What do you mean? What if we got to see other worlds? If us being together means all of our worlds end, why not go see new ones beyond ours? That wouldn't change anything, though. We'd still be dooming existence. But it would buy us more time. The four of them thought of a plan. If they were at the start of the dimensional line, then they would travel to the end. The further away they got, the more time they'd have before the end. Before they set off on their apocalyptic journey, they set up a warning signal for the end times. The plan is for each of us to create an item that is a conduit of our power. Yes, and then we break that item into four pieces and place one piece of them in each of our worlds. Correct. Once they're all there, we'll set up the calls we made to signal that the bleed is about to break the ties to our worlds. And you have to make sure the calls are compelling enough to get the people to complete the tasks. Once they have possession of the four items and have brought them back to each of our worlds, that is how we'll know our time is up. So, do you understand now? Huh? Oh, dip. I got distracted by a new roundo I just saw. Uh, can you say that again? Each went back to their dimension one last time. The entity of Prime One created a sword to entice those who seek glory. They assumed the title of the warrior. The entity of Prime Two forged a shield for those who wished to protect others. They assumed the title of the guardian. The Entity of Prime 3 didn't create anything new. They imbued the power into the first items they created, a quill, an inkwell, parchment, and binoculars. They assumed the title of the Observer. The Entity of Prime 4 forged a Super NES Super Scope because they thought it was dope as hell. They couldn't pick a name, so they assumed the title of the Undecided. They divided the items up between their worlds, placed their messages for others to find and carry out, and then they were off. 
Which brings us to now, and why the four of you have been brought to the Nexus. The four prime entities imbued these items with the power to draw in the will of all that come in contact with them. Each item was made to be broken up and divided into each of the four prime dimensions. These items have been the object of crusades and conquests for eons, all for the sake of getting them back to this very moment. Now that these items have served their purpose, the power they had has been left behind. The Prime Entities created these items without realizing the power they hold. When combined, each of these items can harness all of the energy of your dimension. With that, you can summon the Prime Entities back to their dimensions. The fate of all the worlds were decided by four. Now that fate will either be sealed or undone by four. As the visions around you stop, each of you right now, tell me the person that is the most like, you know, the closest to you because this person is forming in front of you. It is the same one person, but each of you see them as a different person. Kurt. Susan. My grandfather. Uh, my son. They stand in front of you and you just saw all of this and you see these informations and as you see the world literally changing around you, each of you see flashes of the room that you had just left and there's your companion with new strangers and then you see the same one person in each of them. You notice that they're holding the items that you held and that they are surrounded in a shroud of darkness and the entities in front of you just look at you and say... The four of you have to decide if you want to summon back the entities to stop the bleed. And if you do that, you have to decide how they form back and how you can destroy them. The four of you each are representative of your dimension. You have to debate and figure out what way the prime entity of your dimension is going to be summoned back and how they're going to be vulnerable, how are they going to be strong, and all of those things. And it has to be perfectly balanced within this. The only way to stop the literal end of the dimensional line and everything with it is to bring these entities back and destroy them so their powers can be redistributed and anything can be changed the nexus itself cannot destroy it can only create so you cannot destroy them from here but you can find ways to give yourself advantages but if you give yourself an advantage in one dimension it is a weakness in all others for example if you make one of these entities weak to fire where fire just kills it that's fine it is immune to fire everywhere else if you decide that one of your dimensions is not as strong as the other ones, you can make that one the weakest of the four, and the other three will be stronger. You can make them all the exact same strength, but it is up to the four of you to decide how they are summoned back, and you must do it quickly because the only way you could be here without the imbalance of the Nexus destroying everything is the Void had to take your place, and the Void wants to make sure they don't get summoned back. And so the longer you're here, the longer they have to circumvent and sabotage your groups and make them use the items of power and use them for anything but summoning back the entities. <laughs> so out of game, essentially, all of you are going to be building the monsters Ooh. each of you have to fight in session three for your groups. Oh, hell yeah. Interesting. But you all have to debate it amongst yourselves. I will help mediate things and come up with that, but you like will have to come up with how these monsters are working and then other things. You can also change other aspects of your world altogether that have nothing to do with the prime entity. You can change certain ways to like, if you want to make magic more strong in another one, if you want to pull magic away... If you want to kill all monsters in there, it is kind of up to y'all. And this is going to be a very open-ended role-playing session. So the Nexus is like the, the source of like the different dimensions. The void, like Nexus, good, kind of. Void, bad. Yeah. Dimensional line, like where we are. Yeah. And then each of the four entities, like the different, like they're like sources of like these items that are now gone. So those four mm -hmm. like beings, we have to summon them back and kill them. 
Yeah. Okay. But they, I mean, they seem like cool dudes. I'll say that. I, I'll, I'll say that in character, probably. But like, we're trying to. And this is also, I'll say this is another option. Uh, one of you can decide not to do it. As long as there is one prime dimension left standing, it can harness the power to like flow through forward. And then also, this is the other thing. In the final fight, if they are not murdered, they will just escape again and your dimension will die. So this isn't the end of the fight. Y'all just have to create it because the Nexus itself doesn't have the capability to wield the actual like weapons within these dimensions because the nexus cannot extend itself outside of this and the form you're seeing in front of you technically is not like one of the same entities as you're about to hunt down it is just a way for the nexus to communicate with each of you and that's why it's taken these forms so like is the nexus asking the nexus was the one who was like kind of like projecting that and the nexus is asking us yes. to do this yeah okay so that they're, like, asking us to kill them? Well, they're not asking you. They're just letting you know, pretty much. Because the Nexus, you know, if the dimensional line is cut off and that, the Nexus itself will not have anywhere to push its energy towards and will die. And then it goes just back to the nothingness of the entire universe. Um, so the Nexus does okay. want you to do it, but also cannot force you to do it because it is not within the power of creation on its okay. own. So you have to wield the Nexus itself to do that. And so that's how I was saying that this is a very yeah. different oh, session from fine. everybody else. So it's just... just just 100% to clarify here, we are designing mm-hmm. God to kill them. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Your design, because you, this is the thing, they're not gods. They're not, like, they did create life, but it's the idea within this, like, they were just created at the same time of each dimension and just kind of are able to, like, manifest power throughout it. And so they're not gods. You're not killing the creator of things, but these are things that, you know, shaped and reworked all of the power within your dimensions and then abandoned them to leave them to die. So if they're not brought back and destroyed so their energy can just be distributed evenly throughout your dimension, it will destroy your dimension because the bleed and Julianne, you kind of feel like this is whenever everyone kept telling you you were chosen for something great and you were going to shape the destiny of the worlds in front of you. You kind of feel like they hit the, no- you know, it's a bit bit on the nose right now. <laughs> Lope looks around at everything and points at the Nexus person mm-hmm. and goes, that, that's fucked up. You should take that face off. And then turns at Julianne and goes, you know how to use that sword? Oh yeah. Nexus, in the end of this. We going back to our own places or going somewhere else? Y'all will be returning to your own places and hopefully getting back your original groups and writing what's happened so we can have you harness the power of the items that these entities have used and you can call them back with that, but there is a limit to how much they can exert themselves. Uh, hey, do you mind if we have a moment? And Julian just like puts her hand up for a second, like a finger up to the Nexus, and like tries to gather everyone. As soon as you do that, the room that you're in before with like the windowless room just kind of forms around you and the Nexus just says, let me know when you need me. Okay, well, holler. Uh, how are you feeling, all of you? I should not have gotten high before this, dog. This is too much. Seems fair, yeah. Uh, uh, I'm fairly confident, I'm not gonna lie. In my experience, there's no entity or what have you that can't be handled with the proper application of heavy ordnance. I don't understand why you're asking how we are. Uh, you think we should destroy these entities? Monsters need killing. Dude, they like don't seem like monsters. They seem like super cool. They kind of remind me of us. Okay, but they're gonna, st- they're gonna kill your world. <laughs> They're going to kill your world, too. Not killing my world. I'm killing mine. As someone who has uh, killed a world in the past, I gotta say, I'm not too fond of it after watching it. It was quite scary. So I'd rather that not happen to my wife and children, so... No, it's simple. It's simple. It's good. Listen, we set up our worlds. We go there. Kill the monster. I'm absolutely in agreement with you. You got that big sword. You got to be on my side on this. Uh, I have spent most of my life looking towards a higher power to tell me what to do, guide my way, sure, uh, and this nexus may fit the bill, but, uh, to be honest, I'm feeling a little bit like, well, I'm processing, I'm doing a lot of processing, I'm gonna have to continue to do a lot of processing, but it doesn't feel... Right? 
and I really try to do what's right. These these beings, whatever they are, they're definitely higher powers. So you're gonna let the rest die? <sighs> Everyone. Family, friends, enemies. Simple math. One versus the world. The way I seen it, they've already abandoned us once. As far as I'm concerned, they're deserters. And where I'm from, deserters get shot. Lope, hand Cindy a beer. Oh, thank you, dear. I was quite parched. Oh, man. Y'all, I don't know. I've I've never killed a, like, a god before or anything. Like, is that what we're doing? Have you ever been in a big white space of nothing before? Uh, like before the past two hours? Yeah, yeah. Nah. Okay. You can do new things. Yeah, I guess. Gonna be good. But, like... Save everyone. Feel good about it. Go home. Dog, I don't know if I can. Like, I got a shield. Y'all got, like, big swords. I mean, like, you got a piece of paper, but... Well, now I don't even got a shield. Shit. Well, I mean, back, back home in my van, I've got a grenade launcher. So, I mean, I'm armed, and, like, I know, I know people, so I'm not really that concerned with taking out mine. You think we can bring things from each other back to the worlds? Because you can have this knife. And he holds up just like a big-ass, scary-looking knife. Oh, Doc, can I see that? Hands it right over. Yeah, I look at it. Yeah, keep it. What? Hell yeah, thanks. Aw. Oh. And then he gets a little bit disappointed because he doesn't have a thing to hold it anymore. Hey, Joel, can I read a bad situation? Yeah. Using resources that we have. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, wait, shit, we're playing a game with rules. <laughs> uh, that is a 10. Yeah, so you get to hold three. Oh, wow, three. Okay. Are there any dangers we haven't noticed? You, like, are very obviously just very skeptical of everything like this because this is definitely against everything the Order has taught you, anything you've kind of had an idea of within, like, religion and especially for your just upbringing. And, you know, you're very aware of other different world religions and things like that. And you, the Order itself has exposed you to that just so you can, you know, know more about you. But, like, you're checking a lot of things and you definitely have come into contact with different magics and hexes and beasts and stuff like that. And, like, this all looks like it is you it, you're here you are at the beginning of all creation and you can do things like try to manifest like you're thinking of Kurt and you're seeing flashes of Kurt in the basement and like he's interacting with other people and you see like the doppelgangers all upstairs like trying to break in and so you haven't there's nothing that you haven't noticed but you definitely can tell 100% like you are in a place where you have drawn your power from for your entire life uh what's the biggest threat you can also tell that the energy here is volatile and there is too much of it because the way that this place works is that it wants to create and it wants to flourish and it will do that. But the way it can like push everything out is being bottlenecked by these like the bleed that's been caused in the first pr four prime dimensions. So you definitely can tell that like this place is about to like just explode in every direction and just send ripples across the world that will just like slowly murder it because you know as the line does extend out it does get further away so you know whatever world is on the furthest end of it will die last but you can definitely tell that like this place is ready to blow at any second and what is the best way to protect the victims I think the Nexus kind of comes to you and it's everyone else is still in the room. Cindy and Lope are enjoying their beer and Chet is uh, probably still hitting his vape pen even though he shouldn't. And the Nexus just kind of looks at you and goes, if you want to try to reach out to yours, to the Guardian, you can try that. It doesn't, you can try to convince her to stay and not run again. There's not a guarantee that that will work, and there's not a guarantee that she'll do that. And if she doesn't stay in your dimension, you all will die. If your dimension will be destroyed. But if you do summon them back and destroy them there, their energy will be dispersed, and it will say that so. But you have a chance to reach out to them if you'd like, and you can summon them back and try to talk to them and try to reason with them, but... They've been gone for so long, just how the things that they brought back and forth from other worlds were affected. They have seen so much and gone so far away. There's no telling what state they'll be in, and especially if they find out what's going to happen to any of their other friends. There is an option for you to do this without killing, but it's going to be way harder and way less of a chance of success for your world to live. I think that Julianne 
sheaths her sword. You know, slides it back in and just kind of stands resolutely in front of the Nexus and says, yeah, I'd rather do that. Okay, it can make it a little easier on the others. If you're not going to be trying to attack, you could try to make that entity a little stronger and, you know, maybe more susceptible to reason. It is up to you on how you create and summon them back. Okay. So I think the whole time, I don't think any of you kind of like, I think Julianne was still in the room with all of you, but with Julianne, she was gone. And then now Julianne, you're kind of back in the room and seeing that, you know, they're, they're still just having the same conversation. Doesn't seem like you were gone at like for any time Wibbly at all. Wibbly wobbly timey wimey nexus stuff. And with that, you want to kind of push it up, not, not from down below. The knife will go in better and you'll, you'll get, you'll get a little deeper you, in. You want, just you want that to, leverage. That's be my advice. Really, really lift them up and let their weight do all the work. Uh-huh, uh-huh. That's trying to do butterfly tricks. Don't do that. Yeah, that doesn't work very well with the fixed blade. I don't think we should kill them. Wait, Julianne, what'd you say? I don't think we should kill them. No. Oh. Okay, yeah, fine. No, sure. Roll your eyes. That's... That's fine. I get it. I'm I'm the teenage chosen one. People roll their eyes at me all the time. But you know what? Like, I feel like my whole life has been leading to this moment and I don't want to screw it up. And I think that destroying anything would. I'm, I want to do the right thing. I want to help people and I understand that there are stakes, but I talked to the Nexus and... There's a way out of this. It's not ineffable, but it's uh, it's doable if we can create them in a way that they're summoned back and willing to reason, willing to talk. We can convince them to stay instead of leaving again. And I'd rather do that. I would feel much better about doing that. My heart feels like that's right. Julian, my dear, you are just so precious. Miss Nexus, correct me if I'm wrong, but if one of these entities is made more susceptible to talk, I'm assuming all the rest absolutely will not be. The way the balance works, if you all, except for Julianne, would I'd like to try to destroy the entity when you summon them back, you can make Julianne's very susceptible to reason and more of a of a version of themselves that they were before. But if all of you would like to go this route, it will be, you know, a little harder to do that. It is capable of that, but that characteristic would lend to a lot of things like they will definitely be harder to kill if that's an inevitable thing that has to happen or if there will be stronger in fights against you but that is a thing that is very manageable to make happen if you all would like to attempt to reach out to these entities i don't know what you want to do for your dimensions and honestly i don't really know if it's my responsibility I, I, but i do feel responsibility for mine at, at the very least and i just If you all would do this for me, I know we haven't known each other very long, but I would really appreciate it. Y'all, she's like super persuasive dog. Like, I was like all about killing, like killing the gods, but like, it feels like, like really, really bad now. I I don't know if I can, but like, but like. Fuck, man. Lopez has been kind of just like mad dog staring at Julianne, like basically since she started talking about letting the thing live. Not unblinking, he's not a zombie, but like has not turned his head as anyone else has spoken. And he just nods and goes, you're ready to do that? Yeah. Fuck, you're braver than me. Thank you, I guess. What can we do to make you win? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Though someone was saying reasonableness. Reasonableness is good. Um, willingness to listen, I think, is, is good. You both okay with uh, no listening from yours? Hi. Chet? Fuck, man, you know I'm really turned into the, the whole, like, reasoning with them now. I feel like I can't now. It's not f- Chet, Chet, you came in 
want not to kill him. That's okay, too. You can both have them more reasonable, but it just won't be as easy to do it if two huh. of you take this trade on. Once again, it is a balance that you have to find between these because it is the balance of the dimensional line that's been upset by these four entities, and it's the four of you that are tasked to reset this balance to make your worlds whole again. Worse for me and Sydney sounds, but we got blood on our hands already. The way I see it. Cindy and Lopez are both covered in blood, and Chet and Julianne aren't, right? Yeah. <laughs> Badass. So we get like a great shot after like the Cindy and me have blood on our hands already <laughs> that we're just like torn up and ripped and it's like The camera yeah, pans back and shows makes you sense. both bloody and yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I love that. So for Chet and Julianne's, we will make them more reasonable. But for Cindy and Lope, as far as their their temperament is going to be far more aggressive and angry, and there will be hardly any reasoning with the two of yours. You start to see the room around you dissipate, and you start to see each of you in front of you see glimpses back in your dimension of what's happening. And then there's like four kind of just formless shapes of just of a light spectrum in front of you and you're kind of seeing that like now that you've given one a tribute across for all of them that there is like a baseline of the form that these entities are coming Ooh. back in so right now we have kind of worked on the temperament and their you know I guess logic and and and, and how monstrous versus their humanity so for for prime two and Prime 4, they will be more reasonable and have uh, more in touch with the humanity. But then Prime 1 and 3, we will definitely have uh, more monstrous shapes and um, ideology coming back. Monster hunting is what I do. So what else are you all wanting? And, and keep in mind, there is not just the ability to shape the forms they come back in that you have access to here. There's the ability to shape the worlds around you and create things that you can have for when you go back. But once you Again, it has to be a balance, but if one of you needs more armaments or backup or supplies of sorts or anything like that, we can have that created from here as well. But any boon given to one of you will have to be kind of taken as a bane uh, from somebody else. Well, I mean, I wouldn't particularly complain if I had a bit of heavy artillery. <laughs> I mean, I'd rather avoid weapons as much as possible. I think that... Maybe an open space, uh, something peaceful. I don't know. What's a peaceful time of day? Sunset? Yeah, sunset. Yeah. Open, sort of spacious. So Prime 2 is offering up to exchange with Prime 1. Prime 2 will be giving up armaments and also will be transporting them into a more open field, but the monsters that were with you will also be transported. So you will no longer have the protection of the basement that you were hidden in or the building around you. Prime 1 will be rewarded with some new armaments. Oh, I'm kind of hoping for a minigun. <laughs> Uh, and then the Nexus looks at Chet and uh, Lope and asks if there's any boons or banes or favors that y'all would be willing to exchange. Can do anything? We are at the center of all creation. Could bring people back? In a form. In a form. Not good enough. Dude, don't do it. I've seen Full Metal Alchemist. You don't want to do that. No. In a form's not good enough. Not worth it. Oh, man. I how about car repair? Oh, yes. We can do that. And Chet, in your world, what would you like to take away in exchange for Lopez's car to come back? Dog, I've already got a shitty car. My team is going to be so pissed off at me. <laughs> this is the second time that I've had opportunities <laughs> to, like, do some preparation. And instead, I fucked around. <laughs> I mean, dude, you can fuck up my car. It barely works anyways. All right, so in Chet's world, all cars will be broken. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. We got, uh, we got this, this, uh, person does some magic. Oh, man, we got a person does some magic. We got some good All right, well, magic, shit, I don't want to cool, play with that cool then. Stuff. We got a freaking angel, man. It's you pretty cool. We have an angel. We've got an angel, too. Yeah. Yeah, Aren't yeah, they just yeah, nice? They're cool as hell. Okay, so we're not touching magic because it seems like everyone wants some magic. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I'm looking for something to like convince my like. Is this gonna be like the dude on the like that that disembodied voice who was like talking to me because he seemed like he was real into cool shit? Or is this gonna be like some? Are we? I guess I'm creating this dude. Yes. 
You're creating this entity. Ah, oh, shit. All right, I don't know what he's going to like. Can we make Chet's entity less cool so Chet's willing to kill him if they need to? <laughs> no, man, come on, I don't want my dude to be cool. Oh, Jesus. Chet's entity will be the coolest there's ever been, and then you see your uh, entity form a little more. <laughs> Fuck. Oh, man. I'm okay giving up some coolness. Thanks, dog. We're fucking around too much. And then as Lopez says that, your entity will be the <sighs> least cool. We will refer to them as the anti fonds <laughs> They're totally whack. My team's going to be so pissed at me. <laughs> oh, dear. How, why would you do that to yourself? Can, oh, man. Can I make my dude, like, really like video games? We got a fuck ton of those. All right, your entity will embody everything of elite gamer. Oh, uh, no, 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 dog, I didn't say that. I did not say that. Okay, so one of us gets a boon then. Because Chet took that fall. Fuck. Yeah, who wants a boon? Because that's, that's definitely a, a, that's definitely not that a good not thing good. that you did. I said likes video games. They're going to be Call of duty and all over the place. Oh, that's the opposite so of that. Who would like somebody with sociable skill, social skills? Right, that, team. that sounds like something Me. Julianne could use. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of want the kids' world to make it. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I mean... We've definitely done some good work on, you know, the, some extras for all of you and some temperaments, but now we have to figure out physical forms and weaknesses and strength. How are they going to be formed in your world? What is going to be the best way for each of you to deal with them? And keep in mind, Julianne and Shet, yours will be stronger than Cindy and... Low pays as far as a, a physicality goes. Yeah. Shit, did we say that? <laughs> Let's, yeah. Reasonable. Because of the reasonableness oh, okay. uh, that they have requested mm -hmm. and the idea that is, um, that is part of the balance okay. and the deal that we have struck. Yeah. Well, I know for one, I would like, I don't want to say like, you know, oh, I want mine to be super susceptible fire because like I know fire is a super common thing that everybody likes to use. But like I've got somebody that's mm. quite fond of fire on my team. And so like personally. Nearly killed the manacore with fire too. Like I, I would. Not requesting. Well, all right, then let's, let's not screw around with fire and let's uh, chat, Julianne, do, do you mind if your new friends are immune to fire? No, nah, I mean, like, we got, I don't think we got anybody who could do fire powers. I mean, we got some psychic shit, but I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I think that's fine. Okay. There's no such thing as psychics. All right, so, yeah. Oh, dude. <laughs> prime one and prime threes will be susceptible to fire, and then prime two and four shall be all but immune to fire. I'm worried if the uh, negotiations don't go well. Kid, Chet, you're gonna have a harder time. Sounds like it's gonna be a stronger kind of beast. I think it's be uh, be wise to have a, a backdoor, a weakness, something strong, something you can do. Shit hits a fan, you know? I don't want the two of you going down. I mean, like, anybody else got a psychic? No such thing as psychics. Don't choose that one. Oh no, they're psychics. I've definitely killed a couple. I want mine to have a sword. Ooh. As Julianne says, she wants theirs to have a sword. A sword appears on the figure forming in front for Prime 2. Julianne just looks at the others and says, it's symbolism. Yeah, it's real good symbolism too. I like it. Thanks. I don't mind my oh, not yeah. having a sword. As soon as you say that, you hear the Nexus go, all swords are gone from Prime 1. Wait, shit. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Man, this is tough. Wait, wait, wait. My angel has a sword. Not anymore. Your team's going to be pissed at you. Oh, God, at least I'm going to have an elite gamer. Fuck. Mine might be pissed at me. I don't know. <laughs> we fought a thing with uh, with wings before. Went, went all right. Seems seems that'd be a bad thing for someone to have, right? What? We can take that what? one. <laughs> As Lopez says that, the form in front for Prime 3 spouts numerous wings, and all of the other forms were kind of like floating, and they're now all grounded. And the Nexus informs you that Lopez will be able to travel both by land and air, and the rest of yours will be bound to the land itself. Lopez points at his and goes, Starting to almost look forward to this. <laughs> that didn't get rid of all wings in, in my world, now did it? If so, there would be two things that are really gonna upset my, my, my little angel friend. So, I don't, I'm going to be very careful in how I phrase this. Would there be a way to adapt 
these entities in a way that would be beneficial to your angel friend to help? The angels are more tied to the nexus than most, and they definitely are able to sense the void and have a way of banishing it. Cindy, you're familiar with this because you actually have this banishment power and you did it on the little drummer boys. We were able to send them back, and you can definitely connect it now being in the nexus that the way that Lamar's little brother transformed himself into an alpha little drummer boy to then draw you all there was by manipulating the void itself. Angels are good at, at fighting against the void. So a suggestion could be that the uh, two dimensions with angels in them, that those entities take on more properties of the void. Ooh, yeah. Does Chet agree with this? Agree with which one? I have to be very careful about what I'm agreeing to. The proposed terms is that Prime 1 and Prime 4, since y'all, uh, you have angels in your groups, uh, that your entities take on more of attributes of the void, therefore your angels will be more effective okay. against them and we would be able to take away aspects of the void from prime okay. two I'm and okay three. With that. I think that that's probably a good idea to make the angels more powerful. You do see that prime one and four's creatures are now shrouded in a similar darkness you saw with the uh, person that's taking your place in each two dimensions. Now keep in mind angels will be more effective against this but the void itself is going to be dangerous for all others fighting. I cannot express this enough. There is nothing that can't be handled with the proper application of heavy ordnance. What about the actual physical forms you want each of them to take? How big and small? And this is kind of where we're going to kind of figure out like the different HP of each of them. I don't mind mine being big. We're going to be armed to the teeth. <laughs> I'm going to pretty much say this. There is 100 points of HP. We have to divide it amongst four. I would say, Julianne, Chet, you should probably take the lowest since yours are going to be a little bit, a little bit more rugged in terms of, I'm assuming, like a armor and what have you. Yes. To be perfectly honest, like I have no issue with taking taking a full fifty on this. I wow, understand. Well, that's I guess, but also like once again, I'm going to be I... armed to the teeth here. I'm really not that concerned. I mean, but like we're not even trying to kill him, you know? Like yeah. Yeah. why not? Like yeah, Chet, take some more. But just in the in the off chance that you have to, I'd rather it be quick for y'all. That way, you don't have to suffer through it too much. I you've made some deals that. Make yours real, uh, real dangerous if it goes bad. I mean, yeah. I have faith it won't go bad. Well, I don't. Lopez is like, is nodding at Julianne. Like, there is something about her that he's like, he has drank the Kool-Aid. He's like, nope, she knows what she's about. She's got this. If, if that makes you feel better, Cindy, sure, whatever works for you. I, I killed Unthrax the Immortal. <laughs> This really isn't too much of an issue. I'm not that concerned. No such thing as Unthrax, they're immortal. Also, if anyone says that they're immortal, they've never eaten a howitzer. <laughs> <laughs> As Cindy confidently says that, the entity for Prime 1 just, like, beefs up as 50 hit points have been allotted to that monster. Oof. We got a big game hunter in our team, and uh, I'm fair with these. And he pats uh, the pistol at his side and kind of, like, gestures to a rifle on his back and just kind of gives a shrug. We could uh, try and split the rest three ways, or I could take a little more if, you, if you'd like us to. I'm fine with whatever. I don't think it's going to come to this. Good. Make one of them 16. I'll take the remainder. That's a term I remember. I'm doing math homework with my kid, whose face you've stolen. I still don't appreciate it. Oh, does yours look different? Mine looks like my wife, and like, honestly, it's making me real homesick. Aw, oh, man. Unless your wife looks like my kid, no. I thought everyone's looked like my grandpa. Why would we all look like your grandpa? I don't know. Fuck. I was, that's why I was so confused. Shit. You know, this is a very <laughs> stressful situation and everything, but I feel like we all have, like, really good rapport. Yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll, yeah. Y'all are cool. Y'all are tight. Y'all tight as hell. I'd love to have y'all over for dinner sometime. I know it's Do probably they? not likely being a whole interdimensional sort of thing yeah. right now. I think that's kind of what started this whole yeah, thing. Yeah, I was thinking about it. Because people uh, think they're going to get to... 
Yeah. yeah. I hope People you think they're going to oh, shit. get together for interdimensional dinner. Oh my God. This is like what happened with the Nexus. They were so wanting to hang out that they fucked up the universe. <sighs> shit. All right. Okay. So we yeah, can't, no. we can't do that. Let's but, just, all right. in, let's in just that enjoy case, the present, in that case, y'all. Real quick. Every, everyone gather around. We're going to take, uh, take a quick picture here. Put it up on the Aww. fridge. What? No. These are crazy risks. We're here. We kill them. We I, talk I've to the monsters. I've already pictures. <laughs> Lope is just like clearly talking in all of them. Yeah, no, this is this is all going up on the fridge at home. Chat will take a selfie with with Cindy. I hate <laughs> this. Julianne looks down at her phone and is just like, "Do we have Twitter access here? Wi-Fi? Don't tweet. <laughs> I, I won't. I was just curious. I just. But you do see though that uh, Doppelcon is still okay, trending. Good. I'm I'm gonna take all of your phones. Ah. Uh. Wait! No! no. <laughs> I won't fair. tweet, I promise. As Lopez says that, the Nexus says, all right, all communication will be gone from the other three Aww. worlds and Prime Dimension 3. <laughs> oh, shit. My phone. We'll have, we'll, we'll have the best means <laughs> of communicating. That's all right, man. I've been wanting to cut the cord. No, I don't want a phone. That that might actually cause, like, a, a global economic crash. <laughs> shit, don't make me learn how to use a phone. <laughs> my Nokia does me just fine. My, my wife is going to be so upset when I don't call her. Sorry, and the final thing is how will each of them be able to attack and what will their powers be behind it? So you don't have to come up with the whole thing. This is kind of just like general power sets. Does it help that Julianne already gave hers a sword? Actually, yes, it does. No one else can have like sword or melee geared creatures. I don't know, since it's not got like the big giant one. I'm thinking, I'm thinking somebody smashy. Uh, actually, so both Prime 1 and 2 entities are now, like, fully formed in front of all of you. So, like, for Prime 1, since Cindy says, like, something smashy, you see this towering 20-feet-tall gargantuan just shadow beast that is just stomping and slamming its fist as it goes around. And then that is the form that Cindy's entity will take. And then for Julianne and Prime 2, you see theirs... Uh, entity form and it is a smaller more human or looking figure with a sword and similar to how you saw the guardian and your visions julianne when it before you left prime 2 they look like that but there are parts of them that are like missing like it seems like patches of their essence are gone and you can kind of see it more so but they do seem smaller but they do have a sword that looks the same size as your sword julianne but just uh, like a different color palette to it, whatever, whatever the opposite, kind of that. So they do seem like a weird shadow version of yourself mixed with the form of the guardian that you saw earlier. So those two forms have been completed. Chet and Lope, it is up to you to decide. I mean, like, can we do... F like, they all sound shitty. Like, I can't, like, think of a cool, like, way for some dude to attack me that's going to be, like, good for me. So I mean like I'll go with I'll go with like fire man cuz it's cold as hell as soon as Chet says they'll go with fire, their entity forms in front. It is a six foot tall, because it's weird because the, the, around itself, it looks like a six foot tall creature where its flesh is formed with like bark like skin, hmm. but it is covered in the same black essence since it is also a void creature. And you just see a tainted tree person just throwing black fire all across oh. um, its path. And then that is the form. With a Mountain Dew. Yeah, with a Mountain Dew code red. Gamer fuel. <laughs> oh yeah, that's true. It also it's just it's well it's just saying a lot of hot take. So that's hot. that's what yours is and it's And then Lope, it is your choice. We hunt beasts. Give me tooth and claw. And so it will form a similar shape. It pretty much just looks like a bigger <laughs> manticore than you had just killed. I hope my team won't be pissed at me for that. It's like, oh, sorry. With more wings and more claws, and you start to see the claws itself are dripping in a poison. And same thing with its fangs. These four figures are all now fully formed in front of you as they start to like move around and swirl, and the Nexus form starts to dissipate as it says to you, it is now time for you to all go back, gather the items of power in your world, and summon back these entities, and cast the void away. 
a light surrounds each of you, and you're gone. Seasons was created and edited by Joel Ruiz and is a property of the Critical Bits podcast. Narration by Jack David. Opening tracks provided by People Need Goals. Featuring voices of Adam LeGrave, Rebecca Parks, David Rodriguez and Beck Shepard. Seasons cast list is as follows. Danielle Bryn, Cole Burkhart, Kyle Classett, Brian Eamond, Alex Flanagan, Brandon Leon Gambetta, Taylor Johnson, Shelby Lee, Zalavia Nelson Jr., Jack Packard, Renee Rhodes, Eve Smith, Shannon Strucci, Patrick Tracy, Dallas Wheatley, and Aaron Willems. For links to the cast's Twitter, People Need Goals Music, and more info on the show, please visit seasonsminiseries.com. Also, please consider supporting Critical Bits on Patreon so they can continue to bring you more actual play events. You've been listening to a Do You Validate production. 